the twelve dancing princesses. There was once a poor soldier homeward bound from the war. He was looking for a place to settle down where he might make his fortune. As he sat by the fire in the wayside inn, he heard talk of the dancing princesses. The king of the country, he was told, had twelve daughters, each lovelier than the next. To guard them from harm, he locked at the door of the room in the palace at bedtime each night. Yet every morning, as sure as he dawn, as sure as the dawn, beside each bed in that lock room stood a pair of dancing slippers, weren't quite through. But no one could say where the princesses had been. So the king offered a reward. The hand of the princess of his choice and the right to inherit the throne to any young man who could learn the secret of the dancing princesses. But if within three days and three nights he did not learn the secret, the young man was to die. Many young men tried, and all of them failed. So Snip went the heads next day. Who? Cool said the soldier when the tale was told. This is just the thing for me. The danger is no greater than the risk of war. And if I win, I shall be the next king with a lovely princess for my bride. You may start tonight, said the weary king. And he had the soldier shown to a cut set up just off the bed bedroom of the princesses. The princesses giggled when they saw the soldier, for they thought he, lo he looked very easy to fool. That was what he wanted them to think. At bedtime, the eldest brought him a hot drink, and the soldier took it eagerly, but he did not drink it, as they thought he let the hot milk run down into a sponge by war tide beneath his shirt. Then he stretched himself out upon his cot and soon began to snore. When the princesses heard him snoring, snoring away, they all began to laugh. He might better have saved his life they said. Then they ran to their wardrobes and brought out pretty pretty dresses and they declared and they decked themselves for a ball. Of course they were worn new dancing slippers and soon they were ready to depart. Eleven pretty princesses were merry and bright but the twelve and youngest sh shivered I feel very strange tonight, she said. Something is hanging over, the, over us. You are always frightened, the, el the eldest said. See how soundly this soldier sleeps. And indeed, he did seem to be sleeping very well. But really, he was watching as the eldest stopped her bed and it sank into the floor. In its place appeared, appeared a green trapdoor down which they all disappeared. As soon as the youngest was out of sight, the eldest sprang up, pulled on his cape, and followed them so closely that he stepped on the youngest girl's dress. Who is stepping on my dress? she cried. You cut it in a nail, silly, there is no one there, the other princesses said. So on they went down the long flight of stairs with the invisible soldier close behind. 
at the bottom of the stairs, he found himself in an avenue of trees and tinkling several leaves. I must take one back with me, the soldier thought. So he broke off a silver tree. Crack! went the tree, and the youngest princess jumped. Again, the others laughed at her. They hurried down another avenue where the trees had leaves of brightest gold, and up a third where the leaves were diamonds. The soldier broke a twig from each. Crap! Crap! The youngest princess was terrified, but the others assured her it was just the princess firing a salute. Sure enough, they soon reached the shore of a lake where twelve little boats were lined up. In each of the boats waited a handsome prince. One princess stepped into each small boat, helped on by the waiting prince, and the soldier too stepped into the last boat and sat beside the youngest princess. Will, said her prince, when he had thrown the well, the boat seems so heavy, we are falling behind. I do not understand it. Perhaps the warm weather is causing it, the youngest prince said. Princess said. Soon they joined the others on the lakes far, far side, where a splendid castle stood, its gardens blazed with garlands of lights and filled with music and laughter. There the princess danced with her princesses. The and the ho appeared in the latest dainty shoes. Then back to the lake they sadly went, they sadly went, and into the boats again. This time the soldier rode with the eldest princess, and he sprang ashore first. He was sound asleep on his cot, or so it seemed when the princesses returned. The next day the soldier said nothing. But that night he followed the princesses again, and the third night he did too, and brought back a jeweled cup from the castle under his coat, cloak. So at last his final morning arrived. He was called before the king. Around their father, the princesses sat trying to hide their smiles. Where do my daughters dance at night? The king asked looking ever so stern. At an underground castle beside the lake, the soldier answered with a dozen princes. Then he told the whole story to the king, and he showed him the twigs with the silver, golden, and diamond leaves. Last of all, he brought out the jeweled cup he had taken from the castle itself. Is this true? roared the angry king to the princesses, and they saw they could not deny it. Well, which of them will you have for a wife? The king asked the soldier, when the princess had confessed. I am no longer young, the soldier said. Give me the eldest for my bride. For my bride. The, wed the wedding was celebrated that very day and the soldier was made the heir to the throne. So the soldier had found his fortune indeed. But do you know that none, not one of those handsome princes from underground came to dance on his wedding day? The end. Till our next reading time. Bye.